And now, The View from Hampton U. I'm here with Jonathan Hope, the Director of Advanced Studies in England. He's here visiting with us at Hampton University. Welcome to Hampton. Thank you very much. Now, you are in charge of Advanced Studies, which is a program that we send at Students Over to off for an exchange program. Talk about the exchange program and the experience that the students have. Well, students from Hampton typically come to us for five weeks of a summer school and uh, they study with us, they're doing uh, liberal arts courses. Uh, they will often come with a Hampton University professor. Um, so we've had a number of professors from your English department in particular have come to us, taught students, uh, and uh, yeah, they spend a, a wonderful five weeks in the, in the beautiful city of Bath. Now, what are some of the impacts of the Culture Exchange Program? Well, the, the biggest impact, I think, is probably academic. And actually, one of the things that's special about our program is we put a lot of emphasis on, on really rigorous academics. So students actually do a lot of work while they're with us. They have a good time as well. And uh, it's difficult not to have a good time in the city of Bath because it's such a lovely place to be. It's, uh, it's an 18th century city. Um, pretty much everywhere you look, you see 18th century townhouses. And the students who come to us actually live in 18th and 19th century townhouses. Um, if you've seen any of the movies, uh, uh, Reese Witherspoon in Vanity Fair okay. or Kira Knightley in The Duchess, those are filmed in Bath. Wow. So the students who come to us live in the kinds of houses you see in those movies. Wonderful. Now talk about some of this, uh, the programs that some of the Hampton students actually are receiving when they get over right. to England. Right. Well, we've done a number of different courses at different um, points in the past. Uh, we had Natalie Robertson, who's a history professor from Hampton University, came to us to teach a course about the transatlantic trade. Uh, which was uh, very interesting and relevant because uh, the southwest of England uh, was uh, culprit when it came to uh, um, the, the, the trade. And in fact, um, Liverpool uh, was a dock that was used during the trade and that was where our students went to, um, to do a field trip. Um, so Natalie Robertson led that particular course. Uh, we've had two other professors from the English department who came over to teach a course about Graham Greene, the famous uh, English writer. Uh, Shonda Buchanan, who is a professor of creative writing, taught a course all about, uh, particularly about poetry and rap, and uh, that was extremely successful. So some of our, even our Hampton University professors are actually heading over abroad that's to right. participate. That's right, exactly. In fact, I would say that that's probably where the thing begins. Usually they start by being enthusiastic to come over, uh, they persuade students that it would be a good way to spend their time, and, uh, and we end up with a rather sort of wonderful, vibrant summer school. Now, not only is this program here at Hampton University, but you have many universities um, in this area. So talk about That's what right. other colleges and universities are involved in this culture exchange program. We have Spelman in Atlanta is one of our affiliate schools. Uh, we take students from Boston College, Williams, Yale, so some really good top-level uh, colleges. Let's talk about some of the experiences that the students may have shared with you or that you see them see them experiencing through this program, you know, at, during their time there. Right, well, there are lots of stories come to mind straight away, but um, one particularly amusing story that uh, comes to mind is uh, a young student by the name of Tommy Collins from Hampton University who came with us, studied in Bath. Uh, one of the things you do when you're with us is to go for the day to Oxford and uh, you get to look around the city and see all the sites and that's a, a great thing to do. But also you go punting, which is a kind of Oxford version of a gondola if you like. You sort of like, you actually have to travel on like a flat bottom wooden boat using a, a metal pole to kind of try and project you along the river. And Tommy managed to fall in the river while doing <laughs> that. So that was a particularly memorable Hampton experience. A funny slash embarrassing experience I had while in the program was that we went punting after a day trip to Oxford. A friend in the program, she started off at the ride and she's like, I'm really tired, I don't want to do it anymore. I was like, well, let me try, it can't be that difficult. So I started off pretty good. I must admit, I was pretty good at it. And then we passed this massive swan. I don't know if the swan was like bad luck or something, but shortly after passing the swan, <laughs> um, I lost a rod and then we started drifting towards the bank and then on the bank there's like vines and trees going and things like that so I'm like trying to make my way through it and try to grab the rod and sure enough I reach out for it too, <laughs> too far and I fall face forward into the water and I don't know how to swim so the first thing I did was panic so I'm in the water like splashing like oh my goodness I'm like I'm gonna die blah 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 and my friend is hysterical she's hysterically laughing and other girls in the program they're like having a ball watching me because why? The water's waist deep. But of course, Tommy Collins doesn't know that because he's worried about drowning. So sure enough, I'm not in the water 30 seconds and I climb back in the boat and they're like snapshotting pictures of me like weak, just 
filled with laughter. All this to say, the experience really taught me to go out on a limb. And studying abroad definitely broadens that and it really brings that into retrospect because leaving home to a country you have no idea about except for what you've learned in history. Um, you really, like I said, you get to experience life hands on and it's really an exhilarating experience. My name is Ebony McGee. I work in the international office here at Hampton University. We're located in Phoenix Hall, room 130 on the first floor. I oversee the process for those Hampton University students who want to travel abroad. Normally it's a three-part process that students can participate in. Initially you'll come and visit the office. You'll go shopping, as I call it. We literally have thousands of brochures for you all to view. 19 different programs that head out to 59 different countries around the world. Part two will be to set up an appointment with me to begin the discussion of where you want to go, uh, the funding opportunities that will allow you to go abroad. There are many scholarships that are available, whether they're need-based scholarship, merit-based scholarships, or those uh, scholarships that are provided by the U.S. State Department, being the Benjamin A. Gilman Scholarship, as well as the Boren Scholarship. The last step in the process, once all is said and done, is for me to provide you with a pre-departure orientation. During that orientation, we'll make sure that we review all of the ins and outs of living in a foreign country. Uh, we'll discuss things as it relates to State Department travel advisories, everything down to what to pack. Also in the international office, we provide a lot of information for students as it relates to their families being able to be involved with the opportunities to study abroad. Here recently we had a student who traveled to Spain and her father joined her for a while as a, a bit of a mini vacation. So this is definitely a, a wonderful family opportunity. Hampton University students can also receive Hampton University credit for their travels abroad, whether studying, interning, or volunteering abroad. The time that you spend abroad will actually appear on your transcript and go towards your studies while you matriculate here at Hampton. Again, we hope that you come and visit us. Phoenix Hall, room 130, the International Office. We'll be back in a moment. Does your child like the arts? Does your child have a wild side too? Well, you have to bring your adventuresome child to the Virginia Zoo in Norfolk for the Arts Are Wild event on Saturday, May 3rd, 2014, from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Attendees will enjoy performances by young audiences of Virginia, activities at the Literacy Exploration Stations, and they'll get to meet C.C. Bell, children's author of Rabbit and Robot and Sock Monkey. And it'll all be topped off with a visit to the Virginia Animal Zoo. So come on down and let your child's imagination go wild. For more information, contact Young Audiences Arts for Learning Virginia at 757-466-7555 or visit our webpage at www.yav.org. And now, more from The View from Hampton U. Hi, my name is Rich Venezia. I am a campus representative with Diversity Abroad. What I do is I go around to college campuses to talk to students and faculty about how our resources can help their students study abroad. So basically, what Diversity Abroad tries to do is connect students with as many resources as possible. Specifically, Diversity Abroad tries to target traditionally underrepresented students in study abroad, right? We particularly like going to HBCUs to talk, to talk with students to encourage them and to help them study abroad. So we've been to Hampton University um, quite a couple of times in the past couple of years. This is my first time here at Hampton, but I know that Diversity Abroad has been here a couple of times to speak with students. And one of the really great things about coming to Hampton was that we were able to go into some classrooms this morning, and I believe we have in the past as well. And that's a really great way to get students' attention because they're already in class, and it's a great way for students that might not have the extra drive to go over to the study abroad office, that they're in their classroom setting where they already are, we can give them a bit more information about our resources and encourage them to follow up with the international office here on campus so that way they can start working towards their goal of studying abroad. 
And so if students are interested in studying abroad, I would say a great first step to do would be to go and speak with the International Education Office, and as well to check out our website, which is www.diversityabroad.com. All the resources are free for everyone to use, and they're helpful for both students from these traditionally underrepresented groups as well as otherwise. There's a great program database, a scholarship database, and a destination guide to help you figure out where you want to go, uh, what program you want to go on, and how to help get you funded to get there. Um, like I said, it's free to use. You can create a username and, and password as well if you want to create an account. You can uh, get involved and uh, write some blogs for us if you're interested, and you can apply for some of the scholarships as well that we have listed. There's a great resources on there for um, in terms of forums and blogs and other student stories as well. So there's great um, opportunities for uh, peer-to-peer -peer communication, so that way students are, can communicate with recently returned study abroad students and discuss with them about their experiences abroad. And so again, the website is www.diversityabroad.com. One, this is the perfect program to kind of prepare yourself to study abroad. Because they're such small knit classrooms, you really get to have that hands-on interaction with your professors, which is what Hampton is all about, having that small classroom, small classroom ratio to the teacher, so that you really get to know the professor, the professor knows you, and you really establish that teacher-student relationships. Two, the scenery, coming from a very uh, metropolitan city, there's a lot of greenery and a lot of trees and hills, and it's so convenient to walk from where we lived to the classroom. So you really got to experience life and nature, which is really awesome, because you know, I'm used to seeing skyscrapers, metal and glass. I really got to see this beautiful bath stone and the Georgian architecture, and to see life from another perspective. Number three, this may sound cliche, but kind of bragging rights. I think once you have, uh, you can say on your resume, like, I studied abroad. You really, you're definitely differentiated from your counterparts for academic or professional endeavors. You really get to say you've done something that everybody else hasn't done. And only that, you become more cultured and more knowledgeable of the world. You get to, if you hear someone in a conversation, they may say something, they come off as a stereotype or something, you can say, well, no, that actually didn't happen because I did X, Y, Z. I think the advice would be do it. Um, I think a lot of students feel a little bit hesitant about um, traveling and studying abroad and wonder if you know they'll be able to cope with the cultural differences and what have you and certainly every student who has come to us it may have taken a few days to adjust but within a very short space of time they're very grateful that they, they took, the, took the risk and took the leap so I would say uh, yeah don't be shy come on over. <laughs> Is there any um... Uh, other points you want to mention about working with Hampton University or your experience with Hampton. You've been doing this for about 15 years now. Yes, I have. I have. Well, I think I would say that this is honestly one of the most welcoming campuses that we ever visit and uh, it's always great to be on campus. I enjoy being here. I know my colleagues do as well and uh, it's probably the least stuffy college that we visit. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here and we're, you are always welcomed here at Hampton University. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank you. When I found out that I had prostate cancer, I thought it was the end of the world. My wife broke down and cried. The Hampton University Proton Therapy Institute is treating prostate, breast, lung, pediatric, brain, and other cancers with the most precise form of radiation treatment available. Proton therapy made it a wonderful life. It really did. If you or a loved one has been diagnosed with cancer, call the Proton Therapy Institute at 877-251-6838. Great day to be alive. And now, more from The View from Hampton U. Good afternoon, my name is Letizia Gambrell Boone and I am the director of the Assessment Center here at Hampton University. But during the summer, I have the pleasure of offering an exciting program for young people, the Hampton University Young Diplomats Program. This is our second year offering this program and it is a wonderful opportunity for the university to showcase its focus on international and world affairs. We attract a caliber of student from around the country that is very dedicated to understanding how to be marketable in our global economy. We offer a number of exciting academic programs which include studying the United States and China through the lenses of human rights, 
economic development, and social implications of the arts. So it affords students the opportunity to take a good look of U.S. and China relations. They also have the opportunity to learn to speak Mandarin. They will have the opportunity to hear from Hampton University officials as well as elected officials and persons within our community that are interested in and focused on global affairs and youth empowerment. We also afford the students the opportunity to have fun. So after a full day of rigorous work, they get to choose from going horseback riding, or sailing, they can participate in tennis instruction or do something that's a little less formal like go bowling, watch a movie, do some fitness activities. So we have a really full program that we offer for the students. They are coming from around the country. We are expecting right at about 100 students and they are coming from as far as the Virgin Islands, Colorado Springs, Colorado, up and down the East Coast, Detroit, Atlanta, New York. So it's a really exciting program for our students. While we put no academic requirements in place, the program has attracted a certain caliber of students. We found that most of the students that are participating in the program are either 9th, 10th, 11th, or 12th graders, and they have a GPA that ranges from 3.0 to 4.6. So we are really excited about this program and what it has to offer for our young people. Hi, my name is Chris Hendricks. I'm from the U.S. Virgin Islands and I attend Charlotte Amali High School. Well, so far, my experience has been really good. They help you know what to expect when you're attending college and they help you to see what the world is like. They give you a different perspective other than where you're from where you're from. The most important thing I've learned is that everything is not always as it seems. You see college life every day on TV and in movies and you expect it to be one way and it's never how you're going to expect it to be. There's always something new that you're going to pick up on. Hi, my name is Amore Washington, and I live in Columbia, South Carolina, and I go to Blythewood High School. My favorite activity so far has been sailing, because you have to work as a team to get from point A to point B, and we had to learn how to put the sail on and control like different parts just to go through the water, and it was a new experience, because none of us had ever done it before. The most important thing I've learned through the program is that you have to open yourself up, introduce yourself to new people, and embrace new experiences, because if you stay closed off, you're going to miss out of what it has to offer for you. So you can't just stay around one group of people, you have to be open to meeting new people and trying new things. The class I enjoyed the most was human rights because we're comparing stuff that goes on in America to the stuff in China, and you can kind of see how different they both are, but also the similarities. People are kind of on the defense because you have the government controlling in China, and then you have here with Americans taking each other's human rights, and you can compare and we read different stories and just see how the world is kind of different, but also the same in many aspects. I think the experience, it kind of showed me that college is really filled with so many different people from everywhere. They just know different music and know different things, so when you come all together, you can kind of share that. That's kind of what I thought college would be, but then when you finally get to experience it, it's like a whole new thing. Hi, I'm Daquan Marcel Love, and I'm a senior political science major, leadership studies minor from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm the Student Government Association president here at Hampton University. The Young Diplomats Summer Program here at Hampton University is one of the most dynamic programs for high school students all across the country to be able to gather here at one of the nation's most prestigious universities, Hampton University, and to learn for one week about what it means to be a diplomat, learning about diplomacy, learning how to be a global citizen in today's global society. The past two years, we have focused majorly on China, which is one of the United States' most aggressive competitors in the global market. Students have the ability and they are able to learn more about not just China, but how the United States interacts with China. And this particular year, being our second year, we have placed a renewed focus on social ventures. So we are enabling our students and giving our students the tools and the resources to be able to start their own social ventures, their own businesses. And so by the time that they leave this camp, they will have a business plan, they will know how to market, and they will also know how to develop and how to fundraise so that they can meet their goals. It's, this is not just a summer camp where students uh, come to the university and tour the university all week. No, 
Our students are learning about debate, social implications of the arts. They are learning how to speak Chinese. They are learning uh, ballroom dancing. And Hampton University is very equipped and very uniquely equipped because we are able to offer our students equestrian, sailing. You just don't see those other things at other universities. And this particular program is truly, I believe, going to be one of the most precious gems of this university that we're able to offer students at a very affordable price this particular program for students to come and to immerse themselves in something bigger than themselves and to leave Hampton University at the end of the week prepared, energized, and equipped with the tools to make a difference in their community. Hi, I'm Allison Arbigas. I live in Williamsburg, Virginia, and I go to York High School. My favorite activity in this program has been the horseback riding. Um, at first, I was extremely scared, but after it all, it was a lot of fun, and I learned how to do all that you need to do for the horsebacks, and it was just, it was awesome. It was really cool. My favorite class in this program has definitely been the Chinese. I mess it up the entire time, but it's been a lot of fun learning all the languages and everything. I'm fascinated with the Chinese culture because I want to do something in the government with it, like probably a diplomat or an ambassador or something like that, just to work with them because their culture is so extensive in history and it's just, it's really amazing. The most important thing that I've learned in this entire program is that just because something may seem far away doesn't mean that it actually is. And by putting yourself out there, Millions of opportunities come to you, and you just have to go for them. Uh, hi, my name is Xuan Shu. Xuan is my family name, and Shu is my given name. I come from China, and uh, my hometown is Changchun, Xilin Province, located at the northeast part of China. I'm very glad to come here to teach the Young Diplomat program to offer the Chinese and uh, Tai Chi and like paper cutting some culture project to these high schoolers. It's really a good memory and experience. So those high schoolers are really smart. They are, amaze me a lot. You know, I teach Chinese in Confucius Institute at the College of William Mary. So we focus on the communities. Uh, so most of the students are senior people. So it's very different from the high schoolers. You know, the young people, they can learn very fast, they have good memories, but they really did a good job. I teach them Chinese, okay, so they learn Chinese from me, but I also learn a lot from them, uh, because, you know, I just became a teacher not very long. I still need more and more experience to improve myself. We not only offer the Chinese language, we also offer some calligraphy, paper cutting, and Tai Chi. So as we know, the culture and language cannot be separated. For example, like paper cutting, we do paper cutting actually is the Chinese character paper cutting. So through the paper cutting, they can have a better idea about the Chinese characters, how it is, what, the, what is the structure of Chinese characters. When you learn Chinese language, it's not only the language itself, is also the culture because we when we say the same thing we use different way. Tai Chi is the is a Chinese philosophy. They have a deep philosophy of China. So when you learn that, you know how Chinese people think in daily life. So that's why they they speak Chinese in this way, not an English way. Overall, it's a great experience. 非常荣幸能够教 Young Tibetan Mass Program. 我希望他能办得越来越好。The View from Hampton U, bringing you in-depth interviews, cutting-edge research, amazing sports highlights, faculty and student profiles, and much more. I'm Stephanie Sutton. And I'm Joseph Walters. And, and you're, you're watching, watching The View from Hampton U.
Did you know that Hampton University senior and broadcast journalism major Mariah Cruz interned with NBC Universal for the 2014 Winter Olympics in Sochi, Russia? Cruz was part of a select group of Emma Bowen scholars who attended the Olympics to work as media interns. The Emma Bowen Foundation for Minority Interests in Media is a multi-year internship program for students pursuing careers in the media industry. And now, you know. Join us next week for another exciting episode of The View from Hampton U. Thank you.